Progress by Andrew Joshua T. Long. Luna versus Ponyville. Chapter Round One. Fight! Celestia did not often sigh in frustration. She found more positive ways to deal with negative emotions, such as selling them into protective pursuits or causing solar flares. True, the latter had happened more often than she liked, but she had long ago learned how to keep it under control, for the most part. That airplane had been just fine, though. Luna! Luna! Celestia called out to Sarah the library. Receiving no answer, Celestia hummed and flew up. She cast a tracer spell, but found it and picked up multiple returns for Luna's location. The Princess of the Sun hummed thoughtfully, then smiled. Luna had sequestered herself in the basement of the library, where numerous ancient records and volumes were cited. Indeed, many of the records in this section were at least as old as Nightmare Moon. It was dark and dusty. Thousands of bookcases arrived in a library of librarians to devise when bored. Luna had gotten through it just under an hour, now sat at the lone desk in the exact center of the maze. She was reviewing some ancient documents, abacus clicking under her nervous hoof. A flash of light filled the dark library, and Luna looked over her shoulder to scowl at Celestia. You're not supposed to teleport in here, Luna protested. It's the simplest way to get through a maze, isn't it? Celestia said with a smile. Luna's scowl deepened. Thoughts cheating. I prefer to think of it as creative problem solving. Celestia chuckled. <laughs> she looked at the tomes Luna had out, trying next to the desk. Hmm. Aristotle's writer's trick in ethics. I did not get to see his finished works before Nightmare Moon. Luna said they they are very good. Hmm. Yes, they are. But there are copies of his work in the library above. Celestia said. She nuzzled Luna affectionately. My dear little sister, what's wrong? It's Sundown, sister. Luna admitted. Celestia blinked. Whatever did she do? Nothing! Luna said quickly. She pulled out a copy of put Tony's Republic and covered her face. Celestia leaned in closer to her, still smirking. Luna peeked over at her head book. Nothing? Celestia asked. Yes! Nothing! It must have been quite to nothing, Celestia observed. Come down, Luna. Was it really that embarrassing? Luna slowly peeked over her book, letting Celestia spy red spots on her cheeks. Luna flew in straight to her bedroom window, bearing groceries in her mouth. Oh, oh, Sundance! Oh, I didn't. Oh, my! The milk smashed again as Luna turned tail and flew through it, leaving a pair of very embarrassed ponies. Well, at least I know this isn't a dream. Hoyen! What? Did you knew I'm not a passing? Luna mumbled as he covered her face up with a book. Oh, I see, Celestia said with a nod. She leaned in really close, so to the point Luna could feel her breath on her ear. You saw them together, didn't you? Luna, Celestia smirked. When I eat, it fell out of her chair on the floor. Sister! Ah, adorable. Celestia sighed. When I got backed up and scowled at her sister. But is it funny? I disgraced them and myself a few of them and such a, such a fearing them! When I sighed. I do not think I could face either of them. Well, probably not right away, Celestia said. However, hiding in the base library basement won't help. I'm ready to try, Luna mumbled. Returning to her books, Celestia sighed again, twice in one day. I have another reason for finding you, Celestia said smoothly. I need you to go down to Ponyville for me. Oh, Ponyville? Luna asked, peeking over her book once more. Celestia nodded. Yes, the town has been through many stressful situations in the past few months, and I want to see how everything is doing, she smiled. I also give you the chance to meet with some of the ponies who aided you. Luna shook her head. Oi! That doesn't seem... Miss Applejack certainly holds no grudge. Celestia said gently. I doubt any of the others will. But I have nothing else to do today. Because you're so very studious. 
Celestia said with a gentle smile. Luna huffed. I could justify you. Luna said. Celestia nodded. Yes. Yes, you might. The two sisters stared at each other for a long moment. Luna visited. Celestia remained serene. Luna finally heaved a sigh. Oh, fine. Wonderful. Celestia said cheerfully. May I at least go in disguise? Luna pleaded. Celestia nodded. Of course, my dear little sister. Your entrance will be quite settled. I will make all the arrangements. Luna stared for a moment. Trumpets blared. Pegasi in the air corps flew formation overhead. Fireworks went off as Celestia stepped out of her chariot with a smile. Mares and gentlecoats, allow me to introduce you, Miss Celine, a perfectly average pony. Celestia looked over at Luna. She was covering her head with her hooves as every pony stared. Say hello, Celine. I think I knew the way, Luna said quickly. Don't worry about me. Celestia just smiled. Of course. Ponyville looked quite pleasant and quiet as Luna approached it, trying at an easy pace from where she had landed. As she entered it, she appreciated the old-fashioned architecture, the bright colors of its painted buildings, numerous ponies going about their lives. She smiled as she a bit nervously whenever a pony smiled back. She continued on her journey towards the center of town. Luna was unsure where to start with the town, much less the ponies within. How would she even start? In the central square, which was a circle, she stopped by a barrel and looked around carefully, wondering where to go. I suppose I could find one of the Sikhs. It's not like she recognized me. Hello, Princess Luna! <laughs> Luna jumped, looking for the source of the voice. <sighs> A bright pink pony with puffy hair grinned at her from out of the barrel. Oh, look at the pony! Have you been here long? How long have you been? Luna <laughs> covered the obviously insane pink mare's mouth with a huff, giving a nervous grin to any pony around. Most seemed oblivious to what had happened, for Luna was very grateful. <laughs> she turned and whispered in the pink pony's ear, "Please, don't say anything. Please, 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 please." <laughs> The pink pony nodded as Luna went through her huff. Oh, I get it. You're here incognito. Pinky said loudly. Shh! Luna hissed. Pinkie Pie's eyes widened, and she nodded. <sighs> um. Vic? I got a little problem here. It's not Pinky, P I N K Y, it's Pink E. P I N K I E. Oh, right. Sorry. What's your name, you pony? I've never met before. Is it no way, anyway, Princess Luna? Pinkie Pie asked Luna very loudly, to the point multiple eyes were on them both. I wonder if I could just twist my own head with my magic of light now. She thought to herself as she slowly looked up, bringing her eyes to chest level at Fairy Lee's. Um, Celine, she said. Pinkie Pie laughed and jumped out of the barrel, hugging and tackling Luna in the same movement. Oof! <laughs> Look at the pony, Celine! This is gonna be great! Pinkie Pie said loudly. I'm Pinkie Pie! Pleased to meet you! And um, yes, you too. Luna says Pinkie Pie gave Luna the biggest, most obvious wink in the universe. The pink pony got off and off of Luna, allowing the moon princess to get to her hooves. Not a moment before doing so, however, Pinkie had already had a hoof on her shoulder, striking her off. Come on, I get to throw you a big look at the pony field party! I... I'm not gonna be staying that long, Luna protested. I don't need a party. Pinkie Pie stopped, turned her head very slowly to stare at Luna. Luna could swear her hair became less poofy. You don't? Yes, Luna coughed, feeling very uncomfortable. Ahem. <laughs> well, not right away. I hope you get to please show me on all time. Perhaps you'll have... Luna suggested. Pinkie Pie's hair became to a full puffiness, and she smiled cheerfully. Come on! Pinkie Pie said cheerfully, bouncing along. Luna followed at a slower pace. What have I got myself into? Well, what do you think? Pinkie Pie asked cheerfully, as she grinned at the center of her home. Luna looked around, and knowing just how pink the place was, she could blend in and not talk like a cobra. She thought to herself, 
You do have a lovely home, she said with a smile. But you probably have to pounce over to the kitchen. <laughs> Sit down, and I'll make us a cookie, she said cheerfully. Let's sat down on a couch and looked around. Before the cat, there sat a contraption that Luna mistook for a microwave, but a moment's thought reminded of her proper term. A television set, thought, uses an electron gun to project emphasis onto a fluorescent screen. She tried up to it and examined it. Sundance did not own a television set. She watched it with Hoyan when he, she was over at his home, but hadn't gotten one for herself. Luna hadn't asked why. She was busy coming to grips with everything else she was being confronted with. This must be the on switch, she thought, and pressed the button. The screen came to life with a high-pitched hum. Soon images and sound came forth. Linda sat back down on the couch and began to watch as an older coat he went into a home to a song played on a piano. He smiled at the camera as he went to the closet and changed out his suit. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? He sang the song very cheerfully, and Luna became enthralled. Yes, I would like to be your neighbor, she said softly. Hello, neighbor. How are you doing today? The cult asked. Good, Luna said. Something about the cult was very trustworthy, despite only seeing him on the screen. I'm glad. It was a very rainy day outside, so my suit got wet. When it's raining, it could be very frightening. All that thunder and lightning. The cult said, A friend of mine once showed me a scary movie with the lights off, and a storm going outside. <sighs> that was really scary. So hypnotic. Why can't I look away? Luna thought, I just want to be this cult's neighbor. It's alright to be scared, though, sometimes. Sometimes, it can even be fun. A sharp little bit of excitement. Kind of like a roller coaster. The cult continued. Other times, though, the scaring could go a bit too far. As Lady Elaine Fairchild will learn in the neighborhood of make believe. Would you like to go see it? Oh, yes. I would, Lena said. Here comes the trolley, too. The sound fell, and soon the TV was mute. Lena blinked and looked around. Hmm? What does this happen? Lena asked aloud. She wiggled her bottom before feeling some plastic. Mm hmm. Luna moved off the couch and looked down at a black plastic rectangle buried between the cushions. She pulled it out and studied the bo buttons. This is some kind of control mechanism. I must have made the sound drop, she thought. She scowled as she looked at the remote. The only buttons had number with labels had numbers. She sat back down and shrugged. The heart of science is experimentation, she reminded herself. And hit a random button. Come on down! Fell in a voice. When they eat, it fell off the couch. The ice guys, Carl, Carl's used the wagon reporium. We've got carriages, we got wagons, we got cows, coaches, pantheons, truckers, trains, chariots, and aftermarket used cutting MOs. The image of a brightly painted car, car appeared, whereupon he was strapped in with a smile. The smile turned to fear, as the wheels on the cart popped off and fell back, taking him with it. The loud announcer leaped into the frame, spread his forelobes to try to hide his assassin behind him. Yes, Caminos! Extra cheap with low miles. Your family will love them. He said quickly. What a made face. See, hit, hit the button again. Ha! <laughs> the other close. You'll always remember this. I'll say you almost caught Coffin Sisisto. Let me hit the button again. Come on. Where is it? Here on the summit of Mount De Laurentiis, young lava and spawn crawl out of the lava to make their first breaths. Fascinating, but not locked, would have thought. So he hit the remote control again, trying to determine the precise input to use. Hmm, the well, hostage should just keep hitting this one. It seems to increase the number of the talent indicator. I'll reach the right channel eventually. And so Luna did, scanning through the channels. She lingered for a few moments on the various programs that seemed very interesting. But the simple joy and kindness of the cult in the jacket and tie compelled her to continue. But everything I hold dear, she has a lot of channels, Luna thought. She hit the button again, but nothing happened. Huh? She hit more buttons. The shower refused to change. Hmm. Luna corrected. 
she sent the remote down. She went to the program. Apparently, she just got to the start of it, which has a title of Cupcakes. Hey, hey, how far could this be? Gonna stride and still didn't watch. All right, this is gonna be great cookies. Piggy Pie said aloud as he put the fizzy touches on the cake. See how the rather tin. Hmm, I feel like I'm forgetting something now. She grinned and defies the laws of science. Snapped her hoof. Of course, the princess! I forgot to ask what kind of cookies she likes. She took a cupcake pan in one hoof and knife in the other. Maybe she like to help. After all, the poor princess looked incredibly stressed. No need to add to it with a surprise party. Just a nice introductory party. Pinkie Pie classic. She entered the living room and watched Luna watch TV. She grinned. Well, we need just a little surprise. Luna's hoof was pressed to her mouth. The weather was to keep her screaming or throwing up. She didn't know. Who made this? What sick twisted monster would do such a thing? She had tried to summon the will to turn off the television set. But like a train wreck, Luna found herself unable to turn away from the gross of atrocity taking place before her eyes. It's not even a good plot, her mind firstly argued. A big pony invites her friend of a full party. Does she get got her? Does member her and turn her into cupcakes? That's ridiculous! <laughs> Hey, princess! I forgot I need something for you! Piggy Pie called. Hey, what? Luna slowly turned her head. Piggy Pie stood up back on her hind legs. Her bushy tail blocked up from the light in a nearby window, casting Luna in shadow. Her wide eyes and wide grin suggested mischief and madness tied together in one bright pink package. The front hose slowly rose like the blade of a guillotine, in the sunlight they shined. In one hoof, glinting like her smile, a long, cruel knife ascended, ready to plunge into Luna's wildly beating heart. In the other was a well-used cupcake pan, with red splotches all over it. Yes, ready to make dessert. You know, I look for the day. I look for the day I go onto our Ruby site or go to fanfits.net's Ruby section, and I find out a fanfic called cookies, wherein Ruby invites either Blake or Weiss into the kitchen, and then suddenly Weiss wakes up, finds herself strapped to a table, and standing in front of her is Ruby, but no longer wearing her red cape, and instead is wearing a cape with all the symbols of all of her victims, and then she proceeds to dismember and kill Weiss, and then bake her to cookies. I love for today I find that fic, because I'm gonna laugh. Applejack trotted up to a tree nearby, absolutely laden with apples. With a confident smile, she turned around, lifted her rear up, and stabbed her legs into the trunk as hard as she could. Then she sat down on herself on all four hooves to accept the resulting rain of fruit. Oh! What the? Sword! Applejack groaned and looked over at her shoulder, as he blinked in disbelief. Ugh, Princess Luna? Luna groaned and rubbed the back of her head. She looked at Applejack with a flush to her cheeks. Ah, oh, hello, Miss Applejack, she said. Applejack narrowed her eyes. Princess, what are you all doing, my apple tree? Sigh, I wasn't the way. It was yours. Luna said, I was just, ah, uh, <coughs> resting. I can see why. You look exhausted, Applejack said. Ah, uh, am I getting off, Molly? Oh, oh yes, sigh. Luna said she got off Applejack and onto her hose. Applejack got back up as well, and put some must hair out of her eyes. Well, come on, Lyle. I'll take you to the farmhouse. Applejack said. Luna looked at the scared apples around him and smiled. Oh, why don't you happy with these? Now, reminds us like, there ain't really no need for that. Applejack said as he began to pick apples up and toss them into her baskets. I'm perfectly capable of handling this little job on my own. Uh, but I knocked you down, Luna said, so it's my responsibility. Applejack sighed. Oh, all right, your Majesty. Well if you said the hose are better than... Applejack blinked and looked down at her sides. All the apples were now securely in her baskets. She looked over at Luna, who was following the ones that didn't fit on either side of her flanks, with telekinesis. She smiled and gave an equine shrug. Win in Rome. Right. 
Applejack said. She gave her a little smile and turned to head for the silo. Luna followed. Luna found herself enjoying the smell of the apple grove in vast fields. She imagined what it would look like at night with swarms of fireflies dancing through the branches. The smile as the thought, thought further restored her sense of peace. On the bright side, she hadn't hidden under a desk. Pretty much only because the only desk she'd seen in Pinkie Pie's room was probably on its way to a low Earth orbit by now, along with large portions of the wall and the TV. Pinkie Pie was alright, though. She could sense it. I will have to apologize and make things right, Luna thought. She started with a flash of something pink, but found her heart rate lowering when it oinked. As soon as I stopped being terrified of anything pink! After depositing their burdens into a storehouse, they trotted off to the barn, where Applejack began to hitch herself up to a wagon. I've got a few more trees to take care of, Applejack said. The wagon will make it go faster. You got handsome apple juice in the kitchen in the house. Oh, you sure you don't require any help? Luna asked. Applejack roused her head to say something, but stopped when she saw Luna's sincere expression. She went to the side. Well, I suppose you can help me a little, if I really need it. She turned to her and smiled. Don't say he'll drink for me when I get back, alright? Not a problem, Luna said with a smile. Applejack smiled back. Trying off back to the orchard. Luna was about to head off to the farmhouse, when she saw a splash of color out of the corner of her eye. She turned to look at it, and it seemed to be the corner of a book stashed under the chest of tools. That's odd, Luna thought to herself. What's a book doing in here, Bon? She used her telekinesis to gently lift the chest up. She then summoned the book to her, and caught it with her huff. She lowered her chest back down and lifted the cover. Twinkle, Luna said in the title aloud. The novel cover seemed to indicate an involved romance of some sort, with a mare and colt together in a dramatic pose, with an apple held between them. Curiosity fully awakened, Luna opened the novel and began to read. Oh, my beloved Sunny Muffins, our love can never be! Shining Sparkle May said, as the golden sun made his perfectly perfect skin shine in the warm loving sun. A warm wife that just as strong in my hose and between my flanks, as though I was the first in the villi, I couldn't bear to let him know. But, Shining Sparkle Main, I love you! You are so beautiful! I gushed over his long, flowing locks, his piercing and gorgeous, fantastic eyes, his sinewy muscles, his perfectly carved flanks. I forced my eyes upward. Oh, what you see before you. You call beautiful. It's the skin of a monster. Shining Sparkle Main sobbed, manly tears rushing down his shining cheeks and rivets. I desperately wanted to lick up. My plain legs covered in their plain, ordinary skin visited under the gaze of my ordinary green brown eyes. The wind began to blow and make my regular brown hair wave in the breeze. Shining Sparkle Main's beautiful ebon locks waved far more beautifully than mine could ever could. At that moment, I realized three things. One, Shining Spark of Main was a vampire. Two, he wanted to kill me. And three, I was hopelessly, madly, completely, unbelievably in love with him. Four, I wanted him to mount me and ride me like a long, hard trail of marshmallows. And there was one thing with an apple I always wanted to try. Applejack sighed and wiped her brow with her hoof after dumping the large load of apples into her cellar. She smiled and stretched. Mmm, time for a break! She took one apple out of the cart and tried towards the farmhouse. She passed the barn, however. She caught sight of Luna. Green slice? Ah! Luna spun around, her cheeks bright red. Hello, Applejack! Applejack frowned. Something wrong? Did you know nothing's wrong, does it miss? How are you? Luna asked. Applejack narrowed her eyes. Ah, what are you doing in the barn? Applejack asked. Nothing, just admiring your gear box, she said. Applejack stared. Luna stared back. Applejack sighed and shrugged. Ah, oh, well, I'm just gonna have a little snack, she said. You want one? Ah, oh, no, 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 not right now. 
I'm fine, just fine. Linda said quickly. Help Zach shrugged. See it yourself. Help Zach licked her lips. She raised an apple to her mouth. She rubbed it against her chin and brought it up to her mouth. She noticed there was a significant amount of moisture clinging to this apple. She smiled as she licked the wire off. Mmm. She bit into it. The explosion of flavor washing over her tongue in the most exquisite fashion imaginable. She chewed it once, twice, three times before slowly swallowing it. The simple joy of eating something she had grown with her own host went down her throat to warm her insides. She lit up the apple juice that dribbled onto her chin. Oh, my! There was a thud. Applejack looked up to see Luna crumpled on the floor in the barn in a dead faint. Applejack saw, gaped. Lion Slicks! Princess Luna! Princess Luna, you all right? She held up Luna's head and fanned her huff in her face. She didn't know something beneath, underneath the unconscious moon goddess. Huh? Applejack picked up the object. Pales when she saw the title of the book. Herbal Jack, what's wrong? Out her Princess Luna? Big Mac's voice boomed over her. Applejack's freckled cheeks turned bright red as Big Mac crowned over. What happened? Oh, I'll do right with you! Applejack said, guiltily hiding the book behind her. Let's get her in the house and some more. Right. Big Mac said. He picked Luna up, slung her over his back, try it off. Applejack took the book back out and grins. Why, well, Elsie rarely pulls some new stuff off of me? She then scowled. I was wondering why those cults were acting so funny at Lowe's yesterday. Interestingly enough, guys, the uh, comments of this story have a bunch of references that I only now am get getting. <laughs> Round three! Fight! Oh, oh, where am I? Luna moaned as she opened her eyes. She stood up on all fours and looked around in confusion. A forest? Indeed, she seemed to be in a less tranquil forest. A pair of butterflies flew by. Luna smiled and watched them as they settled on a sparkling mane of Big Mac. Luna, Big Mac said as his skin brightly sparkled in the sunlight. I'm afraid I've got the skin of a monster. Uh, no, no it isn't. Luna said confused. That would be my skin. <laughs> Cackle Nightmare Moon. Oh, come on, Nightmare Moon! You really don't think that's not about you, you pop up? Of course. You love seeing me. Yeah, I do. Her blue mane flowing like magical fire. She smirked at Big Mac as Luna looked at her in confusion. You know what that means. Yup. What? What does it mean? Luna asked quickly. Her eyes widened as Big Mac and Nightmare Moon held up apples. The latter with a perverted grin. No! No! She turned and gowled for her life. Right up into a door with standing in midair. Oof! She opened it and slammed the door shut behind her. She held her body against it, panting for breath as she tried to catch it. She looked around. She was apparently in a dark bedroom. A dark, familiar bedroom. Mm hmm? Oh, my. Huh? Luna gasped. She looked over the bed. The light switched on. And the bed was a relaxed looking Celestia in. Oh, the kiss! How oh, could you? Luna cried. Her abacus was dressed in a red smoking jacket and had a cigarette stuck between two beads. Let's face it, Luna. You were gone too long, Celestia said with a smile as he hugged Abacus. But we'll invite you to the wedding. We intend to do a lot of multiplication anyway. Celestia smiled. Now nah, you're a Paris right. <laughs> Luna asked as he buzzed around. <laughs> Luna? Hey! Luna? Luna! She was being shaken. With this, Luna opened her eyes. Big Mac and Applejack were both standing over her, looking concerned. Nice two chests. She mumbled as she regained her bearings. Big Mac stared in confusion while Applejack blushed. What's she talking about? Nothing, nothing. Oh, anyway, I hope you don't mind when he brought you to the clinic, Applejack said. Luna blinked and sat up, looking around. 
was a simple but clean and well-stocked clinic. A nurse probably trotted up to them, with a clipboard held in her half. She looked over at them with a smile. Ah, uh, Miss Celine, you check out just fine, the nurse probably said. Applejack nodded. Alright, life's good. What about Plinky Pie? Plinky Pie? Luna asked. The nurse ran over to a bed surrounded by curtains. Applejack, Big Mac, and Luna followed. The last feeling was incredible interpretation. I knew. She was just fine when I left. I was sure of it. Sure, she fled at supersonic speeds, but Piggy Pie hadn't been caught up in anything. Had she? The curtain was drawn aside, and Piggy Pie laid in bed, covered in bandages and casts. Her once life filled eyes now dull. I'm sorry. She doesn't have long. No. No. She was so young. I'm pink. Applejack sobbed. Lair, lair, Applejack. Egg Max said, patting his sister on his shoulder. She's lived a fulfilling enough. Twilight Spark Sparkle blew her nose loudly as the purple mane out e pony sobbed. <laughs> oh, why? Why? <laughs> Rarity, right, that was her name, cried out. Twice, no. I'm so sorry, Pinkie Pie. I'll never forgive you. No! <laughs> Rainbow Dash, greatest flyer in Equestria, wrapped her hose around Pinkie Pie and shook her. No! You can't leave me alone! What about... She sobbed dramatically, but wiped her eyes. Our future! Our dreams and hopes! Our... Our child! Wait, you have a child? Twilight asked. We well, were going to adopt, you got a problem with that? Rainbow Dash snarled. Twilight reads her hopes. No, 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 no problem. We're not gay if you're, that's what you're thinking. I'm not gay! I'll do every call in the question if I have to prove it! Rainbow Dash, Sugar, we're making her dad faster. Alpha pointed out. Uh, Miss Lee? Miss Lee? The nurse inquired. Don't mind her, gnome. She does this a lot. Appletech said. Yup. Pinky Pie contributed. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> it's Pinkie Pie on height. Luna asked, sinking out of her daydream. The nurse pony pulled the curtain aside, revealing a Pinkie Pie who was rapidly eating through a pie. She grinned at a big cherry red while smiling at him. That's fine. Thanks for asking, Celine. She wiped her face off with her tongue. Was well, more than a little distressing, but Luna's relief overcame her queasiness. So, does one turn ways and have been Pinkie Pie? Well, your house looks like a twister hit. Applejack said. Pinky glanced at Luna. Luna glanced back. Pinkie Pie smiled. I put too much Pinky Pie in my cupcakes, and then exploded. Like it, sir, huh? Applejack asked flatly. Pinky nodded. Yep, Pinky Pie. Oh. Actually, Luna began, but Pinkie Pie interrupted. Eating soda, Pinkie Pie insisted. And the looks from Applejack and Big Mac, Luna slowly nodded. Right. Anyway, if I'm all right, I can, can I go, please? I have so much pie preparation to do. Pinkie Pie insisted happily. There's Pony sighed and nodded. Sir, just try not to use too much of that baking soda again, will you? Of course! Piggy Pie said happily. Hey, Applejack, I could really use your help, Piggy, today, since my house kind of blew up. Applejack looked suspiciously between Piggy Pie and Luna, but slowly nodded. Sure. Great, see you there, Piggy Pie said. Better get a head start. Applejack nodded. See you there, Laura. I'll see you around, Miss Lane, she said. Luna nodded. Of course, goodbye. Applejack and her brother tried off. Big Mac wore a little smile that he shared with Luna, who plussed furiously. Once they were gone, and the nurse pony had headed off, Piggy Pie jumped out of bed. Well, I need to go, Piggy Pie said cheerfully. Oh, wait, Piggy Pie, Luna said. I just want to say I'm very, very sorry about what happened. Oh, don't worry about it, Piggy Pie said cheerfully. Mr. and Mrs. Cake are starting to get our cigars. And you wanted to expand your shop anyway, so it all worked out, right? Luna nodded. Or what? Besides, every pony seen that stupid movie had been acting a little weird around me. Piggy said dismissively. A little too quickly. 
It's nothing new. Luna smiled and nuzzled Pinkie Pie's cheek. Pinkie Pie started a bit, a little surprised. I know what it is to be recorded differently. I'll just something out of your control that happens, Luna said. Pinkie Pie blinked a few times, and then caught her head and thought. Luna blinked blanked. You know, when I was like my moon, Luna pressed. Oh, oh, right! Pinkie Pie nodded. Luna stared in no small amount of incredulity. You forgot that! No, I just didn't think about it, Pinkie Pie said. But you know, if you're still hung up over it... Well, I'm not hung up over it, I'm not. And I'm certainly not going to create a dream, dream pony that'll, that'll cause me endless suffering because I need to punish myself. I'm not thinking about it or worried about it, and she doesn't appear in my dreams! Luna said quickly. Speaking Pie's turned to stare. Luna sighed and kicked her house against the ground. Okay, maybe I still need some closure. See you, man. Oh, okay, in that case, why don't you go talk to Rainbow Dash? Pinkie Pie says, and she should be at home at this time. You, you can go see her, or talk, or whatever else you need to do. Luna smiled. Thank you, Pinkie Pie. Can you tell me where I can find her? Simple. The crown house of fear. Pinkie Pie said. Why are you home for the structure above? Luna frowned. Um, what's the matter? I'm trying to keep my identity secret, remember? Oh, well then, I got just the thing to get you out there, Pinkie Pie said cheerfully. Oh, what? A few minutes later, a brightly colored contraption, now powered by two ponies, was sent to the sky and flew on for the cloud house above. Yay! Pinkie Pie laughed as he pedaled furiously. This is even better with two ponies! Luna smiled brightly, and agreeing, Yes!